Hi, this is Stacy Black, uh, Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Bossier Parish Community College, and we are now on Module 3, Open Campus for Math 099. Today we are going to talk about multiplication of numbers and also of algebraic expressions variables. So if you look over at your class notes, we are going to start off with just talking about, if you look here, we have exponents. Exponents are the little subscripts on top of the numbers. And the job of the exponent is to do repeated multiplication. And that number that that exponent is connected to is called the base. So when we have 2 cubed, for example, that means we're going to take the base 2 and we're going to multiply it 3 times. So that means 2 times 2 times 2, which would give you the result of 8. Now if you look at expressions 3 and 4, those are the ones that cause us the most difficulties, so let's go work those out together. If we go up here, we have this expression, negative 3 squared. We also have read this expression the same way, negative 3 squared. But if you look, they look different because expression 3 has parentheses in it, where expression 4 does not. So when you work them, you work them a little differently. The parentheses means when you go to square, which means to multiply something by itself twice, you're not just squaring the number 3, you're also squaring the symbol. So this expression means negative 3 times negative 3. So if you understand, the square belongs to the whole expression, the symbol and the number. So when we square a negative 3 times a negative 3, a negative times a negative is a positive, and 3 times 3 is 9. That is very different than this expression. Even though you read it negative 3 squared, it means something totally differently. This says square just the 3. Leave the negative sign in front. That negative sign is really the number negative 1. So this is really a negative 1 times a 3 times a 3. Well, we all know 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. So you have to be very careful when you're working with exponents to pay attention to parentheses. If everything is in the parentheses, that exponent belongs to both, the symbol and the number. If there's no parentheses, then the exponent just belongs to that number and the symbol stays in front. Okay, let's go back to the notes and let's see where we're going next. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is some rules with exponents. The first rule is very obvious if you have the exponent of 1. For example, in arithmetic, if I write 5 to the first, that just means write the 5 once, which is 5. So in algebra, if you have x to the first, you would just write the x once, which is just x. Therefore, you'll never see the exponent of 1 in any answer in algebra. Okay. Now we're going to go to a new rule called the product rule. And I'm going to have to explain this to you. So let's go back to the board. Pretend you didn't have a calculator. And I was asking you to do 3 squared times 3 to the fourth. Well, we know this exponent 2 means to write this twice, 3 times 3. We know this exponent 4 means to write this base 4 times, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, now if you look, you have the same number, the same base, being multiplied 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And instead of multiplying that out and getting a huge number, we could just say this is 3 to the 6th power. Now, what we want to do in algebra is we want to be able to look at this expression and get this result without doing this work. So we have a rule. And the rule says when you multiply the same base, the base is 3, the base is 3. All you do in your head is add the exponents. 2 if here, 4 here, that makes a total of 6. Now, we're going to use this rule all the time in algebra. Because remember, we're multiplying not numbers, we're multiplying variables. So if we look at one of the examples on our class notes, 
we have the example 5x times 3x cubed. We know it's multiplication because we have the parentheses. Now, in all honesty, you could show work for this. What you can do is you can say, okay, I'm going to multiply first the 5 times the 3 because those are numbers. And then I had to multiply the x to the x cubed. That's using a property that you learned in algebra called the commutative property. It doesn't matter what order you multiply in, we get the same result. So if we multiply the numbers, which if you remember, they're called coefficients. 5 times 3 is 15. Now we're going to do the product rule. And the product rule says when you multiply variables, the same base, you add exponents. Well, wait a minute. I don't see an exponent on the first x. Remember, we just said it's understood to be a 1. Every variable has an exponent. If you don't see it, it's understood to be the number 1. So now if we do the product rule, we add these exponents. I have 1x, you have 3x. We multiply that together, we get x to the 4th. So this term multiplied 5x times 3x cubed, these monomials multiplied, would give us 15 x to the fourth. That's our rule for multiplication. What you have to remember is you have to understand the concept of multiply. Multiply means to make bigger, so when you multiply the exponent should get bigger. They should change. We're not doing adding and subtracting like we did in the last module. We're multiplying now. Let's try one more of these. So if we look at our notes and we look at Example 5, we have 1 half x times 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds y. Again, this is obviously multiplication. There are two parentheses side by side. There's nothing logical in between them. When you multiply, you multiply the numbers, the coefficients first. This time they happen to be fractions. So we have to go back over arithmetic. How do you multiply fractions? Well, the rule to multiply fractions is numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So in my class we sing, multiplying fractions is no problem, top times top, bottom times bottom. So top times top would be negative 2, bottom times bottom would be 6. But as you all know, all fractions must be in reduced form. So to reduce 2 over 6, you have to divide by 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that would give you negative 1 third. Then you have to multiply the variables. Well, if you look, the variables are not the same base. This is the letter X. This is the letter Y. They're not the same. So you can't add their exponents. So to show multiplication of X and Y, we just write X, Y. What I want you all to pay very close attention to is how things are typed or written in college math books. A lot of times you will see the negative sign in the middle of the fraction bar. You will also see the variables in the middle of the fraction bar. That is an acceptable answer. However, there is another way to write that answer. When a negative sign or variables are in the middle of a fraction bar, they automatically rise to the top. They belong in the numerator. The reason why is if you made this a fraction, and put it over 1, that would be in the denominator. So another way to write negative 1 third xy would be to write negative xy in the numerator and 3 in the denominator. We wouldn't, when we bring the variables up to the numerator, we wouldn't have to write the number 1 because we already discussed that a coefficient of 1 is understood. And this makes sense. Dividing something into three pieces would be giving me one-third. Okay, let's try another multiplication. So, let's look at another rule. Okay, our next rule is called the power rule. And the word power means exponent in math. So if you look at this expression, it has two exponents. So what we're going to find out is how do we work this the long way? And then what would be the quick way to work it? So let's go back to the board and look at this. I have 3 squared cubed. 
That's how you read this. So I'm going to write that on the board here. 3 squared cubed. If we were working this out the long way, we'd start inside the parentheses. And we know 3 squared means 3 times 3. But now we still have this exponent on the outside. This exponent belongs to everything because it's in parentheses. So cubing means we're going to write all of this three times. So we're going to have 3 times 3, 3 times 3, 3 times 3. Well, if you look, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 threes to multiply. And we just saw a minute ago, instead of multiplying that out and making a big number, that would be 3 to the 6th power. Remember, every single one of these numbers has an invisible exponent of 1. And the product rule says when you multiply the same base, you add all those exponents. Now, what we want to do is come up with a shortcut. How can we look at this expression and get this result without doing the work? And if you look, it's very simple. When you have two exponents side by side, and there physically is a parentheses between them, think about what parentheses means in algebra. It means to multiply. So that's what we did. The product, the, pa the power rule says, when you have two exponents side by side, they're connected by multiplication. You leave the base as a 3, and then you multiply 2 times 3 is 6. So now let's try a couple examples out of our class notes. The first example I want to look at is just very simply y to the fourth cubed. Now again, you could work this out the long way. You could say, okay, y to the fourth is inside the parentheses. I have to do this three times. And you could write it out, this term, three times. And then you would be using the product rule, because this is all connected by multiplication. And what we just learned, when you multiply the same variable, you add exponents. So 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12. This would be y to the 12th. But a quicker way to do this would to be using the power rule. The power rule says you have two exponents. I have two exponents. They are connected by multiplication because of this parentheses. So if I use the power rule, I could do this in my head. And say, okay, two exponents side by side are connected by multiplication. The base is y. 4 times 3 is 12. So it's the same result. The power rule is just a little bit quicker. It's a shortcut. Let's try one more example out of our notes. Okay. Our last example is going to be 2y squared to the fourth power. Again, if you did this out the long way, this 4 implies you're writing all of this four times. And we could do that. 2y squared, 2y squared, 2y squared, 2y squared. Again, if we're connected by multiplication. We would multiply the coefficients first. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Then we'd multiply all these variables because they all are the same base. They're all a letter y. And the rule would be the product rule. When you multiply variables, you add their exponents. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. And that would give us 16 y to the 8. Now, if you didn't want to do the product rule, and you wanted to do the quicker way, which is the power rule, you have to be careful on this. I know you all see the two exponents. And the power rule says when you have two exponents side by side with a parentheses, they're connected by multiplication. And you all are going to do 2 times 4 and get 8. But you've got to know who owns that 8. That exponent 8 will only belong to the y because this 2 exponent only belongs to the y. So if you do the power rule, you'll get the y to the 8. What you've got to be careful of is this 4 exponent also belongs to this 2 because it's in parentheses. So you physically got to take the number 2 and say, okay, it's got an exponent. 
it's understood to be a 1. And if we do the power rule with that, 1 times 4 is 4. So that would be 2 to the 4th power. So what you got to understand is this 4 belongs to everybody, this coefficient and this variable. So when you do the 4th power, you just can't do the variable. You also have to do the coefficient. And that 2 has an exponent of 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Unfortunately, as you all know, because this is a number, you're expected to work it out. You need to do 2 four times. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And this is the same result. Okay. Well, that concludes the first part of Module 3 on multiplying monomials using the product rule and the power rule and understanding the exponent of the one. Have a great day.